Oh yeah. I love that. That's yeah. tremendous. Who is also oh, she's gonna, oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. It was consensual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Welcome back to the Oh Yeah Podcast, the podcast for degenerates by degenerates. My name's Blanket Blake. I'm Dorsey. And today we have Victorino. I interrupted him. He was almost perfect. Um, <sighs> he was almost perfect. I thought I had to cue him in. He's actually a great guest. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I got bad news for everybody. I know we uh, we we took a little bit of a we, things have been going crazy and bad things happened over the weekend. Uh, he went to Louder Than Life over the weekend. Great music festival. I didn't get to go this year. Uh, but while he was there this year, during one of the sets, Dad, he tried uh, crowd surfing. Oh, Dorsey Whoa. loves doing my that. My leg. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not my leg. My head. And, oh. and he got dropped on his head, and he ended up having a terrible brain aneurysm, and he passed away. Wait, yeah, really? Louder than life. Yeah, yeah, he died at Louder Than Life oh, this shit. year. Oh, shit. Yeah. Whoa. It's very sad. Oh, um, the worst part is, is nobody picked him up. They just kept walking on him. Like, everybody just kept, they thought he was a decoration. Like, somebody just dropped him, and everybody just trampled over him in the pit and stuff. So they can't even, like, really bury him in an open casket. Is he still there? I I haven't got confirmation. I mean, I were you, have you seen him today? We're at his house. No, I, you just told me to come here. I didn't know yeah. he was dead. Yeah. So oh, well, that sucks a little bit. Yeah. Well, that is a very interesting way to start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I wanted to get the viewers video. up to date. You know? <laughs> uh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Get the viewers up to date real quick. No, anyways, uh, now that you're here, man, how are you today? What's going on with you, bud? Um. Okay. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I've been hearing about you guys for like a good minute, like since like the spring, and I, mm. I I wanted to come on here, but like then summer happened, and then like I was trying to get out here. I performed a lot. This is probably like the most I performed ever as like an artist slash Fuck musician. Yeah. So it's like it's been a very crazy year. Fuck yeah, I love that. So I mean, the best place to start, I feel like, on this episode, uh, we'll talk about the gentleman that actually got us together, uh, Mr. Nine Hundred Four Macha. Oh, uh, where did that? Uh, shout out Macha. Uh, where did your guys' relationship start with that? Where did that come about? How long have you two known each other? Uh, I met Macha this year. Uh, oh damn. Okay. Yeah, it's it started uh low key way back in uh late February when I uh we were we we're all a part of like this collective uh. There's a bunch of us. We'll probably get mentioned later on. But, like, uh, this thing called the Gridlink Music. And basically, it's, like, a collective of, like, artists, uh, mostly local. But, like, I did, I, I, I thought it was Michigan artists when I first signed up for that thing. Because, like, I knew every, I knew of several people that uh, were already on it. And, like, it was pretty much Michigan dominant. But then, like, come to see that Matcha is, like, from Florida. Mm-hmm. And I'm, like... <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> we asked him the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, what are you doing? Why, why are you here? But, like, that just goes to show, like, how cool Detroit is as, like, a music, like, scene, you know? That, mm. like, I'm glad that we're on the map, you know? And not just in the, like, the rap scene, you know? Like, there's, there's more ways than one. Like, there's oh, so definitely. many, there's mm-hmm. so many different legends from Detroit or, like, the surrounding area that just, like, it's crazy from different genres too. So it's like it's. I don't think people put enough light on that. So You're, I agree with that a hundred percent. With the, the experience, much I know you were saying you performed a lot this year. You were performing at Air Arts Pizza and Eats as well. Uh, with uh, what team is it? It's uh, uh, Rayquell Squad, uh, Soldad, and the uh, Team Soul. Raquel Soledad. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Raquel. I don't know Raquel if she watches. Soledad. Hey, hey, that was that was a, that was a nice way to pronounce that. Oh, he's got Gracias, he's señor. got the tongue. Hey, tengo la tongue. lengua. <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> ¿Tú hablas that. español? Un poquito, señor, que sobre tú. And yo también. Yeah, sí. <laughs> es suficiente para para conversar. No. Ahora que sobre yo sí, güey. <laughs> is he gonna outspeak you here on the podcast right now, man? Probably. Oh We're my god! Talking about Spanish. I'm talking about Anishinaabe. I saw your your bio. Hey, I know. I know what he was talking about. I, I, I don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> I need translations because <laughs> that's that's something I'm like even less on. So it's like, oh, <laughs> dude, the grammar is insane in that language. I wouldn't expect you to speak it. Um, I can introduce myself. Cool, dude. I could be like formal and informal, and then like talking to friends at the same time so i'll just do them all at once so like in my language uh my native tongue or my 
other native, t- the literal native tongue, mm-hmm. uh, Ojibwe, or what they call in Michigan, Chippewa. Yep. Um, we would say, uh, Buju, Ani, um, Victorino, Indigenikaz, Wawiyatana, Gindojaba. So I would basically just said like, hi, hello. My mm-hmm. name is Victorino and I'm from Detroit. Never heard Ojibwe spoken in real life, dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 thing. I went to the UP this this summer, and every time I go there, I just just feel the spirit it's so strong. Oh man, yeah, it's I, I've never been up north before, but dude. like I everything oh, I've learned gorgeous. was from like my relatives. You know what I'm of saying? Course. Like my my grandma's from Canada, so it's like yeah. she's the one that taught me a lot of like of the language and stuff like that so it's like it's 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 very cool to see when i can flex that a little bit you know what i'm saying (laughs) yeah Yeah, i actually i was driving through canada and i took the long way home ended up taking a ferry but on my way there i passed through ojibwe country now i had no idea how prevalent the culture still was up there the street signs were written in ojibwe it was so nuts to see super fucking cool Hmm. i haven't been to canada in like 15 years i've never been to canada <laughs> it's it's pretty cool but never like been. i haven't been to like toronto and stuff like that i've only been to the reservation out there mm-hmm. oh, uh, which is so probably sweet. where you you said you took a ferry yeah was it out by port huron i think so yeah you probably ended up in the reservation where i'm registered at wow yeah uh that reservation out there is called wapool island yeah, and that's that's where my per- maternal side originates from. That's so cool. That's yeah. insane. I love that, dude. I love that. <laughs> what an insane writing system, too. It's just so beautiful. Especially seeing it on street signs. I was like, wait, what the fuck? No, I'm, this is Ojibwe country. How did I end up here? I was just <laughs> driving all young and child free. It was great. Uh, that was times. when you were like 19. Yeah, somewhere around. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was young Old enough Chris. to get a beer in Canada, though. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Good time. Turn up. Turn <laughs> up, baby. Uh, just don't get caught by the tribal police. That's all. I did. <laughs> <thankfully. Yeah. laughs> um, so, let, let, after we had that nice sidetrack there, I loved it. Um, how was the performance at Earth Beats and Eats and that whole situation there, man? Yeah. Shout out to Raquel Soledad for picking me out of the 7,000 guitarists out in Michigan, in Detroit alone. Alone, <laughs> she picked me and i bless her heart i couldn't feel more honored to be a part of that i've always heard about arts beats and eats growing up since like high school and stuff like that and like i applied earlier this year as to perform there as an artist but like i think it was like a little too late uh but like she brought me on because she was looking for a guitarist and i i was put hip to like all these dope musicians shout out to james kevin and caleb you guys know who you are (laughs) and matcha because he was there too and raven alexis i love matcha he's a great guy and yeah it's just we just came together i was this is the first time i've ever played something that wasn't like particularly my jam but like it worked because uh Shout out to Dra- to James, who was on drums. Uh, he arranged everything and made everything make sense. So, like, we incorporated the live element to her pop music, where, where it's mostly, like, dance type of stuff. So it's, like, yeah, it's very beautiful. Also, I think I unplugged myself on accident. Oh, you definitely <laughs> did. But you sounded perfect <laughs> for the entire thing. Yeah. It's so, all right. It was perfect there. Such passion. Yes. That's yeah. cool. I've always dreamed of booking somebody for their freaking arts beats and eats. It's like the it's the mecca of local down river bands. If you get a chance to play there, you're the shit. Yeah, that's the, I would say that's true. Like that's probably one of the better hot spots to play to try to get your your name out there. I've always I've dreamt of it. I always dreamt yeah. of booking the fifties out there. That would be fun. But their music, they would have to tone it back. Yeah, they, 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 they would have to do it clean. Yeah, they would have to do it clean. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I I just oh what was it I just. Uh, applied for it because the, the registration opened up probably like a week ago and like Royal Oak has like four different events for uh, through, through each season mm-hmm. and uh, after I, uh, what was it before I applied it said no rap allowed <laughs> no hardcore <laughs> and no metal mm-hmm. so uh, it's gotta be family friendly and appropriate a uh, fun fact: I don't got. I don't know if you guys know, but I actually don't cuss in my music, so that works just I've fine. I've noticed that. Uh, yeah. I've noticed uh, that. I've noticed that a lot in your music. 
And a yeah. lot of really good references in your music because there's a couple of really good ones. There's like I, I uh, there's I can't, I can't remember what song it was, but I was listening to, to it today, and it was just like uh, yeah, Phil, uh, it was uh, Phil Collins could feel it coming in the air. And oh, like you reference that that vibrations, yeah, that one, and then the end of uh, what was it? Uh, uh, don't it was the don't uh, the one don't the, use me, don't use me at the end of it. Billy Mays here, that one at the end of that. Oh, oh, don't 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 play with me. Yeah, don't play me at yeah. the end of that. That I was dying when that. Shout popped. out Tommy Poppy because that was his idea. I that, didn't know what he was gonna that. do. I but, love that dude. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was his idea. Shout out to Tommy. That was beautiful. I love that. And then uh, there was another track, dude. I'm so bad with names. That's why. But in the middle of it. Like, you're like, yeah, it, it sounded good, but the beat kind of went like this. Oh, it was Vibration again. Yeah, 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 Vibration. That's probably my favorite song, dude. Honestly. That was an accident. That wasn't even supposed to be a part of the song. Oh, dude, I like, love that, though. That was so clean. Shout out to Brian Castillo, who helped me produce that song. And, like, I have a producer credit in that because I'm playing guitar. Not the intro solo, but, like, the main melody of it. And then, like the it's kind of hard to hear but like the also like the hook melody there's a slight difference but um yeah we can't we made that song backwards like most people like most rappers uh just write to a beat right and like i had this idea one day just before going to bed like uh, i'm gonna do a tribute to santana who's one of my influences I love santana Whoa. and uh yeah so i go to my homie brian's house and we cooked this beat up and like he's like adding all these like different ideas because like he's he's feeling the vibe he's like oh what if we out what if we add the salsa the salsa segment right here it was so clean <laughs> it was so clean i was jumping around when that popped up i was bopping i was like dude, this is clean oh it goes crazy live like without like the perform like without here like the live version the first time he did that which Brian Castillo was playing bass and keys at the same time. Oh, crazy, wow. crazy, Dude. craziest thing I've ever wow. seen. The, the the crazy switch off. I so clean. Shout out to you, bro. And um, like it just. I wish you guys would see the live version, like the live full band version, because it, it goes really. Let us know the next time you perform. We'll be there. Yes, I will. <laughs> we will pull up. That's yeah. a promise. Man, so, I got a question. If you don't, Dad. No, I'm just thinking to myself how cool it is. So you, how often do you perform with a full band? Uh, this year has been the most I've performed with a full band. Wow. I performed three times, and the end of the uh of October, October 28th, will be the last time I perform with a band. And I'm just doing all the heavy shit. Oh, I can cuss on here, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Say the most fucked up (laughs) shit you want, dude. Absolutely. (laughs) Okay, I'm doing (laughs) all that. I'm doing all. I'm doing all the heavy shit. So, like, I'm doing a couple covers because, like, I I have a few rock songs, but like, I don't have enough to like fill the time that I was. Uh, but like, I'm gonna be covering Deftones and Linkin Park. So, okay, okay. Linkin Park, one of your bigger influences as well. I've noticed. Yes. Was you're a big fan of them? Um. My question is, how long have you been playing guitar for, man? Like, when did that start for you? Um, It started since I was, like, in high school. I want to say when I was, like, a junior. Really a senior in high school. Okay. So, I guess coming up on about 10 years... Uh, but I haven't still gotten any better. But no, uh, that's a lie. That's a lie. You can only get better, sir. Come on. If I'm shooting better at golf, you're definitely playing better at, if you had the guitar. I mean, come on. Uh, but yeah, like I, I, I know different chords now from than what I knew back then. St- st- but like, I love, I love jazz stuff. Like jazz stuff makes me feel like I'm like a pro when really I'm not. But um. Anyway, I've been playing since I I was I want to say around like a senior when I was in high school, and uh, I would just be like performing in the hallways at school because like I would see other there was like a couple other kids that would do it and like I thought they were cool and I was just I just wanted to learn guitar. I didn't ever think I was gonna play guitar and sing at the same time. Like I I had aspirations to be only a rapper, but like then I was like. The guitar is pretty cool, Mm -hmm. you know? And then, like, really my first instrument was a keyboard, but then I ditched the keyboard for a guitar because I was like, I could carry this around everywhere. And then for a minute at when I was in high school, like, in my senior year, like, oh, that's the kid that carries the guitar everywhere, you know? And then it carried on a little bit after that, but it was just like, I did everything with a guitar. 
That's awesome. I and so, that. like, yeah, that just happened that way. I love <laughs> that. Now, sadly, this is one of the moments that we have a commercial break. We're going to hear from our sponsors at Currency Clothing. So, this one. This one. Uh, or this one. And now for an exclusive interview with Colton from Currency Clothing Company. So, Colton, how did you get started? I just really love making clothes. I make them all day long. Thank you for your time, Colton. You can also wear Currency Clothing Co. clothes by going to currencyclothingco.com. That's currencyclothingco.com. Or you can follow Currency Clothing Co. on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. So did you guys go order your uh, your clothing? Because if not, I don't like you anymore. And you should probably go order that clothing. Now, please. Um, we're going to get back <laughs> into this interview here in a moment, but there's a, something we have to address to our audience. Okay. I've said this before. We are the podcast for degenerates by degenerates, right? And every episode, we are drinking very heavily, every one of us. But at this time, me and Chris, we're taking a little bit of a break from drinking for a minute. We're, we're holding back, and we're not going to be drinking any alcohol this game. Um, but we will still have a drinking game for those of you at home that do want to drink and still have this. So we will come up with a drinking game to go through the rest of the segment for you at home if you'd still like to play the game. Um, and with that, I'm going to say anytime we say a genre of music, you have to drink. That's a prom <laughs> idea. Yeah. So anytime we say a genre of music, for those of you at home that would like to drink, oh. you have to drink. If we say rap, rock, R&B, you drink. So other than that, we're going to be staying sober for the most part. But uh, yeah. I just figured I'd like to address that in the audience because, as I said, dude, usually we're cracking beers. Uh, there won't be a mystery beer this segment this uh, this week either. No mystery beers either. So it's going to be a little bit of a different podcast. That's right, Blake. At times, you must embrace sobriety. It's mm -hmm. better for everyone. It is. It's now, better, better Victorino, for your body. would you like to resume with our podcast? Yes, I would. Excellent. Right. I just love not drinking beer. I don't. <laughs> it um, sounds like anyway. a, it's painful, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's absolutely <laughs> terrible. I hate this it. is the real me. <laughs> this is what I sound like in the morning. It's god awful. Anyways, let's get back to the series fun times now, shall we? Um, so I spent a lot of time digging into your music last few days, uh, prepping for you to be here. I've noticed throughout this year you've dropped, I want to say like seven or eight singles, right around that number. I swore it was like four or five. But dude, it it's be. more than that. I <laughs> promise, dude. It's more than that. I also get tagged from my homie Danny S. Like he, he's he did this thing where I get put like as like not the feature artist, but I'm like the other artist as well. I don't know how he does it. Shout out to Danny S. Oh, he's just trying to boost your streams. What a good friend. Because yeah. Danny I'm S, looking at one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh damn! Okay. Well, one of them is an acoustic version, so that doesn't really count. But okay, yeah. So eight. Yeah. Out of those so far, what has been what your personal favorite to drop? Out of those eight, double text. Ooh, no that's a cap. Good one. Shout out to that's Nora a Chrissy. Dude, that's no. a really good one. I was jamming that one out today too. <laughs> oh man, that song gets me in my feels, and I wrote that. <laughs> yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> that's how you know you did something. <laughs> you did. It got me feeling a type of way listening to that too. Like it was, it was a damn good one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I wrote. I wrote that about being like. You guys are the first to to hear me say it. Podcast uh, exclusive. I'm. I'm definitely a simp when it comes to like writing songs and stuff like that. Like sad boy songs are like my jam. Like the emo stuff. Like, there's a reason why, like, the homies call me, like, the emo rapper. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's unintentional, but that just the way it comes out. That's what comes out. That's what I love, and that's what mm -hmm. it comes out, you know? Yeah. Let it ride. <gasps> Feelings. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let it ride, man. That's what that's what inspires hey, don't, you. Don't say that too loudly, dude. We, we're sober. Okay? You don't <laughs> we, say that yeah. word. We don't want to talk about our feelings. feelings. No, no. <laughs> I only talk about my feelings in music, so... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Let me tell you, the last few days have been filled with a lot of Midwest emo, all right? It's Naturally. Been... The weather's permissive of it. But no alcohol in the BAC. There's no BAC. It's just B. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 just I'm blood. Let's back... Let's moonwalk back a little bit to... You play guitar. What do you play? What's... What's your instrument of choice? Do you have like a special? Are you a Stratocaster guy? A Telly guy? I am a, a Jackson. 
I used to be an Ibanez dude, but that's because that was like the cheapest mm-hmm. guitar at Guitar Center. I've moved on. I have since evolved or moved on to my PRS Standard 24 Cherry Red, which you probably see me in music videos and in pictures. I don't understand which one you're talking about. Um, that's care. the one you'll see me around carry, carrying because it's so versatile and like also like my biggest inspiration or two of my biggest inspirations. Carlos Santana, that's his mm-hmm. signature brand. No, oh, no shit. Oh, but also Carlos Santana, that's Lincoln Park signature brand. Really? So yeah, I had to Google it. I wasn't sure, but yeah, I've seen these. What's your favorite about. Santana song? That's been bugging me since. Oh, you said I know it. the answer for him. Put your lights on. Ah, oh, the Everlast song. Your on. <laughs> a There's an angel. <laughs> that dude was drunk as hell when he wrote that song. <laughs> uh, it has to be. My ear. Oh no! Can you can you whisper that in my ear? <laughs> that's so weird to say. Like you wrote that you wrote that actual lyric in a song though. That was twenty years ago. It's probably way cooler back then. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but uh, no, my favorite Santana song is like a toss up between like honestly, Maria Maria, which is the one that everyone knows. Mm-hmm. That was the big hit, right? The Maria, Maria. Saying no, I'm just kidding. I'm not about to start singing. But anyway, what about uh, freestyling? Maybe, maybe rapping is easier than singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we. I mean, when freestyle, I don't know. We'll see. I say like the dumbest stuff when freestyling. So be warned. So we're definitely getting you to freestyle. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Awesome. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Instagram questions coming next as well. Doing. But the other, my other Santana favorite, which it's not a Santana song technically, but I like the version of it that he did. It's, uh, you guys probably don't know about it. It's Riders of the, it's Riders of the Storm, the Doors cover, but mm-hmm. it's Santana mm-hmm. with Chester Bennington of Linkin Park singing. What? It. Mm. Wow, I didn't know that existed. Mm. That pretty it, cool. it exists and it's, it's beautiful. I'm trying to I think. Like, I like the original. I got to check that cover out. It's the hook for the song I was thinking of. It's. Are you talking about Black Magic Woman? No. Oh, now it's turning into a bad case of loving you. It's not that song. It's it's the really Latin one, the very salsa you one. It was like the number one hit. It was all over the radio when we were little. Oye, como va? No. No, not that one, but that one's hard. Um, <laughs> fuck. Uh, was it the one that was on Guitar Hero? Uh, <laughs> dude, it was all over the radio, and we were in, like, fucking preschool age. Rob Thomas. Maybe? Can you sing that one for me while I Google it? <laughs> it's just like the ocean. Yeah, oh, no, the moon. moon. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that was that was my shit. That's Give me a heart to make it real. Or yeah, just yeah, forget yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Sorry, you know. Thank you. That's smooth. No, that's I hear smooth. it. I know that song. Actually, that's the shit, man. <laughs> that's the actually what the riff of vibration was based on. Dad, I know you hate this, <laughs> but great. I'm doing it. We're not drinking, so I'm doing it. Do it. Go ahead. I mean, I don't smoke, so it's like. Go oh, you ahead. don't? Yeah, we're over yeah, here. Everyone has their vices. Oh well, never mind. If you don't either, I'm not going. No, to. do oh, it because like, that I, bitch you, like a you gotta nerd. do something, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will face it. Like, <laughs> I'll face this thing like a big oh, old nerd. man, dude, that makes you the dork. You're surrounded by two guys who can't. Can you not handle it? Or does it make you see demons? Because it's both for me. That's where I can't do it. <sighs> Getting high in general just has not been a good time for me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, weed is, I, I'm sorry to say that I can't do it. No, it's okay. I my ho- apologize. Some people just can't do it. My, I know. I, my homies know that I'm adamantly against smoking marijuana, but like my my homies all smoke weed so it's like yeah. it doesn't even matter so like, like if we <laughs> force that like or, I don't want to be friends with anyone who smokes weed would be all alone you and I Basically. both I just know it no one would all of our friends would fucking have to go every single one of them I would never be around you. Yeah, no, it just wouldn't work for any any one of them. Shit, when we were in high school, you didn't want to be around me because I was a bad guy because I smoked weed. Mm-hmm. You didn't want to be friends with me. Barely talked to me. That's, all, and that's because I was I was a goody two-shoes. Now I'm a baddie bad bad and still can't <laughs> handle the weed. It's so fucked oh, up. Oh, man. 
Um, the pain. All right, back to your music real quick, man. Okay. There was a bar in one of your songs. I'm almost positive, if I'm not mistaken. It said, I'm sitting on a whole album. Are you going to drop an album that, uh, anytime soon? I'll drop an album when I have, like, enough engagement on my Instagram posts that you... People don't comment and share that Dude, I know they see. You know what? That's a valid answer. <laughs> it's yeah. a valid but, answer. Um, no, like, I feel like when I have, like, a big enough uh, fan base and or, like, have enough traction or enough eyes on me, that's when I'll drop an album. But for now, it's just, like, singles. And, like, I know you guys notice, like, Almost every song is a different genre. Completely I love different. That so much. <laughs> Dude, we need I more of that. that. I we love need way that. more of that these days. <laughs> been, too many people are scared of making a name for themselves in a certain thing when they need to take advantage of when you're when you're just starting out. Hit everything. You know, mm -hmm. find what you love the most and then find what attracts people and then, you know, keep going mm -hmm. out of it. At least leads people know I can do it all. Don't don't expect just one thing out of me for the rest of my life. I'm right. taking it everywhere. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do. Like, like I said, you guys already know. Like, Linkin Park's my biggest influence, and they touched just about everything. And like, I I want to follow in their footsteps, but in a way that's unique to me, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Without trying to sound like I ride them too much, you know. Yeah, <laughs> well, I've discussed this with artists. When when it comes to influences, you want to take from them, but not be them. Yeah. Right. yeah. Take the bits that hit you the hardest, whether it be the composition or the mixes or the. It starts with me. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you, you take that. Oh, you man. don't. You don't say that in your song, but you're like, that's hard, and this is why it's hard to me, and this is why I want to. It makes me want to do something like it, and you do it like it. You channel it. You don't emulate it. That makes you a bitch. Yeah. Facts. Fuck. Can we cover that? Can we just all sing the. Not on the podcast. Not on the podcast. Oh, not get, on, we, yeah, you're not yeah, on the get, podcast. We nope. might get copyrighted. Yep. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> he nope. says, shut that shit up. <laughs> nope. Not on the podcast. We can definitely do that off air. For sure. Yeah, we can have some fun upstairs. <laughs> hang out later. Goodness sure. Gracious. I mean, why was one of the hardest raps of that entire decade in a fucking new metal song? Truly. Like, if that, That's a was point. A, if that rap was over just regular old rap song. It'd be a fucking excellent rap song. So, it's so cool. And they did do a regular rap version of that did song. Did they really? Yeah. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. I'm always what is your favorite Linkin Park song? Fuck. I mean, I asked Santana. Let's get to Linkin Park now. I it's, I feel like it's bad that I have an answer like, right off the top of my head. But it has to be bleeded out mm. by them. Because um, I always used to watch... Like, that song didn't really hit. But then like I would listen to that... I, can't remember when I first came across it. Probably like in middle school. Sounds about right. But it was like, you know, here and there. It was just something. But like when I was like in high school, then I started like really like programming myself to like all of Link Linkin Park's like discography and everything, yep. right? And that song just like particularly <laughs> hit. And sometimes I would... It's really weird when music does this to me, but like I will get goosebumps listening to that song. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered there's live versions of this song, right? And then I listened to the live version and I love that one even more. And actually, I was lucky enough to see Linkin Park live that was gonna be my next question. in 2014. Oh, wow. And their final song was Bleeded Out. And I knew exactly how all the cues because I watched at that point I watched the live version of, and listened to that live version of the song so many times I knew there was they were gonna do a drum solo they did a drum solo <laughs> and wow. like at the end of it with the very end of it the way that it was raining I was in the lawn the lawn area too at uh, Pine Knob or thank you no 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 leave it the way you said it okay leave it yeah. the way you said it yep. no reason to fix it carry on <laughs> continue at, Pi <laughs> at Pine Knob and uh, uh, like it was a thunderstorm and like when they ended lightning struck somewhere but like there was a light lightning in the sky oh, that's beautiful and i had these uh red chucks that i ruined in the mud in the rain standing on the lawn and i didn't even care because that was my memory of that mo that I couldn't record it. I had a little cheap. I wasn't even a BlackBerry. I couldn't record any of the performance. Oh, the BlackBerry. Like, back. it was just. 
Well, I, I was so poor that I couldn't keep up with the well, times. Honestly, so. my thing is, I much like going to the shows. The last little bit is, I've even tried stopping recording a lot of it now to mm. get, stay off my phone just to immerse myself in the experience more. Mm. Because I find I enjoy that more. Like, sure, I'll do a couple real quick ten seconds on one of my favorite songs, mm. but I'm no longer recording the entire song mm. at a concert because I'd rather just live in that moment. So I think back then, maybe even having that experience makes it better for you. Not being able to look back, it's all here. Just it's, it's all deeper. in my head. And it hits deeper in the heart that way. It's on. That's the only concert that lives in my head. And shout out to my cousin Raven for getting me the last second tickets. Oh, Man. that's amazing. That's dope. Uh, and granted, there were lawn seats, and I didn't have my glasses, and I couldn't see them clearly. <laughs> but like, I was singing every song that they played, even those transition songs where they weren't singing anything. I was uh, singing those songs. Well, the thing about Pine Nub is, it doesn't matter lawn seats anywhere. It's a good venue to hear to get good sound and to mm-hmm. see anybody realistically. And it's they really were my good. first concert too. Nice. So that's wow, forever that's ingrained. Really good. Good. That's you. really good. I'm so happy for you. That's <laughs> next that's year beautiful. it'll be ten years since that concert. Man, that's so beautiful though. <laughs> that's so beautiful though. God damn. <laughs> I remember that one specifically like it was yesterday. Dude. Fun fact: My first concert was at uh, Pine Nub too. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, Cheap Trick and Blondie. Okay. One Not way or another. I'm gonna find you. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you know Blondie too. Well, actually, Cheap Trick put on a way better show than Blondie. Um, gotcha. And Blondie was the closer. Fun time. Um, you know what? I gotta ask you a serious question, my man. Hmm. All right. No, this is a very serious question. What's the weirdest thing you got in your fridge right now? Healthy food. Really? Gross. Yeah. That is kind of weird. Yeah. Like. Non fat Greek yogurt. Oh, oh dude, that's no. worse. <laughs> mm. So disgusting. No. You. I can't what believe this guy. When you're on a mission to drop some pounds, yeah, that in the plain shit, too. It just tastes you know what like I do? Oh, that's air. the worst, dude. Like but sour, I need to do it. Sour water is all it tastes like. Yeah. I, when I was on my low carb kick, I'd be. That sounds mm-hmm. terrible. Just, just knowing it was nasty as fuck. That sounds hey. terrible. I would rather quit drinking for the rest of my life than eat that. Yeah, Honestly. Know. Give me my Shrix yogurt or my Gogurt or whatever. Oh, like, oh I'll yeah. That. Now we're going to get know. the Danimals, boy. The Danimals. Oh, Danimals. Oh, yeah, Danimal kick, son. <laughs> all right. We gotta go to another ad real quick. Uh, this one right here is gonna be a secret preview of a new song by the Pink Fifty. What did you get? You got COVID. What did you get? You got COVID. What did you get? You got COVID. Halloween 2023. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I am the man with the Instagram. Questions in my hand. I need to figure out how to get there quickly as I can. I'm on the story post, and I don't see the questions, but the problem is you gotta that, um, that Victorino is here to answer them. Yeah. Yeah. How many fans does he have turned on in his, in his room at night? Is six too many? Asks Walker Andrew 24. I don't know who that is. How many fans do I have turned on at night? Yeah. One, I just have a ceiling fan, bro. Oh, those oh are that's <laughs> what kind of question fan? is that? <laughs> uh, six. Well, do you believe that six is too many? It was compound question. Uh, yeah, six is definitely too many. If right. if you have more than three, all right, whatever. Well, man. you just gotta. Have I gotta one. ask then, how big is it? Um, I get told it's big a lot. <laughs> Good for you. I know exactly who you've. I you know. ain't right, but I answered it. I hope you're happy. Yeah. Uh, that person <laughs> just decided to remain anonymous. I know exactly who that was because they told me. But anyway. All right, let's clean it up a little bit. What is your favorite memory so far with your music journey? My favorite memory? Uh, the first time I ever got to perform a Southwest Fest and I got to bring... That was my first time practicing with a band and we would practice multiple times up until then and like shout out to brian castillo brian ruiz and danny s for coming through like we did the damn thing for southwest fest and we did it at l club too and like that was crazy that was like i always wanted to be a part of a band 
And like, yeah. And the second Southwest Fest. So shout out to Better on Said. Shout out to Nora Chrissy, Dev, and Jabari. And that was like the biggest band I've had yet to date. A seven man band. What? Yeah. At L oh. Club? No, no uh, the Senate Theater. Oh, uh, this the, year the at Senate South- Theater? Holy shit. That's insane. Wow. Man. Yeah. All that- right. Next one, because we got to roll through these so we make sure we can still listen to your music as well. Gotcha. Uh, what did you eat for breakfast this morning, my man? D rank ass this one. Yeah, last podcast, guys. Shout out. Well. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. This, since it's released, long story. We're, we're ahead of time. Um, I ate a French toast sandwich with sausages and eggs and pineapple. Fuck French yes. toast sandwich, pineapple. Good choice. Will Victorino do more collaborations with DJ DDT and Creative Notes? Or Notes, maybe. Oh, uh, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Love uh, that. Is it Notes? Creative notes. Notes. Okay. Shout out to Travis Slang, Snoop Grand, DJ DDT, and J Quest. Ask him if he eats if if he'd eat ice spices booty. <laughs> I know exactly. You fucking pervert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, never in my days. I don't do that. I told you I don't do that. You don't like I the don't, booty? I don't do that. Oh, Not okay. at all. No. Okay. Dude. Okay. <laughs> if you could be in any band. Rock, rap, and R and B. Drinking game. Ding ding ding. <laughs> Which would be. One of each. Oh, so you have to pick one of one rock band, one rap band, and one R and B band. One rock band, Linkin Park. One rap band, The Roots. Oh, oh he's one good. Bitch. One R and B, Sonder. Okay, wow. okay, I like that. Wow, top shelf choices, you dirty son of a bitch. Dude, why am I getting all this shitty one? Why is your head so big? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I don't think it's that big. Dude. <laughs> I was born that way. No, it's, it's a big ass head. Uh, you can't really see. You ain't got the biggest head as George Lopez. So I, you I got a, I got a, uh, a, basically a snapback on, and I'm on the second to last strap. Yeah, so that I'm, should yeah. tell you how big it yeah, was. Okay. I was just about to report the <laughs> same information. That is correct. <laughs> All right. Yes. Anyway, this is a decent one. Oh, this is a good one. What does Victorino do backstage? Does he have a writer? What's in it? I just do normal people things backstage and hide and like enjoy the music but i'm also a wallflower too so like mm-hmm. i don't you won't really catch me unless i like really mess with your music or you're like a close hold me then i'm like up front and being as obnoxious as i can to hype you up and all the real homies know that i do this like i'm the loudest one in the crowd when you're on stage fucking love that <laughs> and what would you put in a rider did you say writer or rider? A writer. Right. Right. So for like your backstage, like when you get your green room, like I want this, I want these drinks, I want these snacks. There has to be like thirty two apples, like one band, <laughs> like Led Zeppelin, I believe it was, had it in their writer. They wanted no brown M and M's in their thing, and the only reason they put it in there is to see if they actually read it and yeah. went through in detail. Lotion. I'm not that famous yet. I haven't come. Well, that's why that it's yet. it's just randomly. What would you What would you want? <laughs> Give me some pineapples that's currently my favorite fruit so he's a swinger folks um ah! <laughs> what inspires your songwriter uh songwriting and uh, does that determine how you sing sing it rap screamo etc i know who asked this one uh really it's uh i'm very <laughs> i don't show it outwardly or i don't show it outwardly enough but i'm very emotional when it comes to like my music oh. As I feel it's like the only true outlet I have to talk about things that I don't like to talk about in person. So um, depending on the vibe or the instrumental or whatever inspires me for the day. Like if it's like a quiet lo-fi type of vibe like double text. Like double text is like a song that you could just like you're laying awake at night and you're just like damn. I'm about to call her. I, I might call her tonight, bro, actually. Bro, I was driving home from work thinking about <laughs> calling her. What do you mean? I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was driving home. I was sitting in the car. I was like, don't call her, bro. What are you doing? Like, stop. I'm like, about the double text. Uh, <laughs> There's something I got to tell you real quick. <laughs> I love you. Say no. I'm just kidding, <laughs> no. I want to go that deep, but <laughs> some things I want to let out. Right. I get, that's beautiful, though, man. I mm-hmm. love that. Yeah. And the screaming is like when I'm mad, obviously. And then the rapping is just like when I f- when I feel cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the best part of rapping. Yeah. So anyway, dream venue to perform at one day. Ooh, okay. Um, there's a few. Uh, Arts Beats and Eats 2024, baby. Boing. Um, <laughs> boom, bitch, get out the way. 
And then uh, there's Little Caesars Arena only because my very Good first venue. performance was at the Palace. My very, very first performance before I even thought about becoming an artist. I did an original song in the old Palace of Auburn Hills. Really? Yeah. I can't even remember that song. It was it was something for like a scholarship. I lost, obviously. That's but. wild, dude. That's <laughs> wow. crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, what's your uh, f- what's your favorite song to perform live? Wastelands, Break Free, and that is currently my heaviest song in my catalog. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out Cameron Eastwood Drive. Yeah, that's who this yeah. question comes he from. He wants to know, and this is a good question from a good guy. It is hamburger or hot dog style. Hamburger, because hot dog. If you're, I don't want to be a glizzy globbler, so it's like hamburger. Every We're talking time. about folding paper, Victorino. Oh, paper, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, see, I'm a hot dog guy. I make elephants, so I'm a hot dog guy. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm uh, Yeah, I'm hamburger all day long. Oh, okay. All right, another shout-out here. 904 Matcha. Shout-out, shout-out. Shout-out, um, 904 Matcha. I love you, man. I love, love you, too. You're beautiful. Yeah, you stole me, Matcha. Like, like I still want to try it. You promised me that, that we can come over and hang out, and we can try some of that tea. Yeah. And, and you, there hasn't been that invitation, so I'm holding you to that. Yeah, <laughs> get on my beach, you jerk. Oh! Oh, that was a call out. It was. I said, "Oh it my to lord!" A long time ago. Oh wow! All right, all right. We're well, sending you the timestamp on this matcha. Um, here's his question: What is your take on Latina women? And there's an eye, lips, and eye on that one. So he's really curious. He knows. <laughs> he knows. Um, Colombia. I'll say this much, and that's all I'm gonna say. Colombian women, top tier Latina woman. That's all I'm gonna say on that. I've never seen one in real life. I've seen them. You I've seen older done. ones. Ooh. But I'll just leave it at that before it gets weird. But anyway. I, I yeah. want to hear all the words. It's going to be an interesting <laughs> behind the effects. He's going to go in full detail of everything he's seen. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Just you wait, boys. It's going to get interesting. Socks are coming off and so are the pants. Viva now, Colombia. Now, uh, we pulled up a little song here. Is it this top one? Yes. All right. Uh, all right. But that is the song, not the oh, video. No. No digas nada. No digas. No digas nada. No digas. Digas. You say the G in that one. Uh, really? Yeah. The if it was a J. The the okay. You see the one where it was it's three of us on. Yeah. The, yeah. Go down. Go yeah. down. Go down. Yeah. That one. The yeah. G-S. That yeah. The video. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to the homie Danny S. He didn't want me on this song, but I forced myself on this pause. Mm-hmm. Um, con- it was consensual. <laughs> it was consensual. <laughs> But yeah, this song is called No Digas Nada, and basically in English it means don't tell me anything, and it's basically, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to get the one back, you know, well maybe not the one, but you're trying to convince her that she should not leave. We shot this like a couple weeks ago, this is like super recent too. Shout out to Alize. Killing those scenes. Shout out to Alan Aperture for shooting the video. I know where that was shot at. <laughs> you do? Yeah. I got pictures in that alleyway. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I got pictures done in that alleyway. Leaving. You got all these reasons. The smaller 
those things I say always turn into fights And they say real love is pain, but it's half the price So if you're really down, then we can make this right, girl I just need more time That shirt. Shout out tribal streetwear. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would say something. <laughs> Just dope. I had to pick a manly, but also like something with pink, so it's like soft. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, your vocal engineer is good. Yeah. This is beautiful. Shout out to Danny S once again. Yeah, yeah, this is beautiful, so dude. Who is also oh, DJ? Oh, oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. My leg. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm the. I feel like Jim Carrey in the mask. Do you know what we're saying? Yeah, yeah, except there's a that one verb, yeah, it all. You know? What's the other <laughs> Sounds like yeah, which is, you know, iron. But this is a beautiful song, though. This is done amazingly. That's, this is a remake. Shout out to, yeah. shout out to Chico, because he was on the OG, and like, I, I just love this song when they dropped. This song is actually you. like, Several months old. We just dropped this version, like no, we're not probably like. This. Stop it. I like I posted literally like probably like a month ago. I posted a little snippet of like, oh, this will probably never see the light of day, and then like I got a bunch of reactions, and I showed my homie Danny. He was like, hey, maybe we should probably drop this, and then like he's just like, ah, fuck it, we'll do it. So uh, yeah, we did it, and it's actually get, been getting a lot of traction. Yeah, it's fucking beautiful, and the music video was shot nice as well. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, man, that was crispy. Sadly, once again, we're gonna have to break for an ad, and you are going to come back with the freestyle. So I hope you're ready. Yes. Let's All right, on. let's get ready. Yo te Ooh, that makes me want to do some yoga. <laughs> Just kidding. That's TFL. Just put out a new record on All Yeah Records. TFL, of course, is allegedly Zach from the Pink 50s. Yeah, that doesn't sound like punk to me. That sounds like ambient shit. You can do yoga and stretch and cry to. Oh, yeah. All the homies know I do that at every show that they do. I love that. That's yeah. it's tremendous. Beautiful. That's we'll beautiful. get along well. Speaking of show, you wanted a boom bat beat, so I'm going to show you this. Oh, you weren't expecting to hear guitar on that, were you? This is like my jam. Well, I got, I'm curious to see. Okay. okay. Is that Natty or no? No, it's Okay. Oh, it's screaming too? I messed with this so hard. Okay. I'm just going in. Yeah. Just going in. Okay. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, yo, check it out, uh, I'm a kill it in a minute, yo, might kill it with a rhythm, yo, I'm a kill it with the rhythm, uh, going off the top and the way I'm cooking up is hotter than a pot on a stove, uh, you should know when I come up in the spot I'm killing, uh, Coming off of the top and man, yo, I'm going crazy. Uh, this beat is kind of crazy. Uh, got the punk rock style, I'm going lazy. Uh, gotta think of other words. Uh, in other words, uh, I'ma hit it, yo, and I'ma kill it. Uh, try not to say no stupid shit. Uh, but I'ma go through with it. Uh, going up the top, yo, uh, yo. Hold on, hold on, I gotta feel it. This is like intense. Uh, help out, Dad. If you want to throw in words, I can. I can make words. I love words. Frisky. Frisky. Uh. All right, yo, yo. Feeling a lady. Off a of whiskey. It's like I'm just kidding. Uh. 
She getting frisky, uh, touching on my, uh, not the type of artist. <laughs> Fumbling on the beat, but I'll pick it back up and I kill it in a minute. Yo, I got no limits and you should know this. Uh, yo, hey, ready for war? How oh you want a bullet spot? I'ma kill it and you want it hot. Yeah, I don't care if I sound like a fool. I'm not really a rapper though. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's laughs> <true>. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are you guys rapping? Are you guys rapping? I uh, know I can't rap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just like putting our guests in this under pressure situation. Oh man, yeah, this is pressure, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is what I love to do. You on the spot? Let this shit drop. I see you, boy. I let my panties drop. Yo, come here, bro. We go way back. I knew you in high school. We was cool like that, but now we grown men with different proportions. You don't gotta fuck me and get abortions. We so cool and we stay cool all day. Motherfucker, I ain't said that I was gay. I said I fucked with you and you really handsome. A beard against beard. That's the shit I come from. A real motherfucker in the street. Yo, can't fuck with me. I only fuck with me. No, we don't, little bitch. I don't care. You got titties, big boobs, big butt, man. Get away from me, little bitch. So that's a Cypress Hill song that I remade. Uh, oh, to rap with man. Big Jack. I yeah. was about to say, I don't know no fucking Cypress Hill song that went like that. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was from the Twisted Metal 4 soundtrack for PlayStation 1. Oh, okay, okay. We wrote oh, a whole damn. set of lyrics over it, but then Big Jag wanted to be Big Jag. And now we have a whole stockpile and a whole rap album just sitting there with nothing to do with. So. Yeah, that's the story behind that song, which was uh, Feeling Hungry by Big Jag and the Natty God. Yeah. That, yes. well, you went hard on that, both of you. That's Thank you. Th- you know cute. what? That's uh, what we do. I could have did better. Right. I should have came prepared. But then, like, no, also, that's, that's like, written. Well, I hate when rappers come on, like, they're, they're these, like, when they freestyle and they, like, always come with a rhythm. And, like, yeah, it can be cool, but it's like. Yeah, well, mine it's, was written. I don't know. I, I'm trying to get better, like going off of the top. And I used to practice it a little bit, but like I used to practice with the, the random word generator. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so. right. <laughs> so, no, I mean, the thing is, like I said, I like putting guests under pressure, and not everybody's like really good at freestyling. You know, like, and like you even said, rap's not the main thing that you do regularly. Mm. So it's I just love seeing people, and it's I feel like it's interesting to see how they act and if they're able to pull it off. And you did really well. This is my so. first time doing this, so it's like you I had really a lot well. of fun. I I I have to have fun, you know, because it's like no. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's gonna exactly like. Come on, you really about to pull up to like a podcast and be like, "All right, I wrote this at like three a.m. and I'm about <laughs> to go off on my phone." Or yeah, that's take, lame. You know, yeah. so it's just I like, mean, no, we're that's trying to do whole... the real funk flex shit. Yeah, where you get the on the show and then you kick a little little cipher piece. That's why we don't tell people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. trying, I'm trying to be like Tory Lanes and like recite a whole seven minute freestyle. It's like, no, I'm just kidding. I, I'm pretty sure that was uh, recited. If you watch his Funk Flex freestyle, and it, he was going for like seven minutes, no breaks. I don't think I've seen it. It's really good. You guys should check it that. out. Yeah, I would have Even to. though he's not the most uh, likable of people. He just like, shot Meg the Stallion, right? I mean, he only shot him in the... It's not like he shot her in the chest, right? It was like, the she leg lived. or something. She lived. That's, we've all had disputes around I'm about to girl. get canceled. <laughs> no, no, no. We're talking That's about fine. shooting somebody. You can't cancel somebody <laughs> over that. that. Yeah, Try yeah, it. Yeah. Come on, yeah. dorks. Yeah, get out of here. That's dumb. He's doing his time for it. Yeah, it's getting paid out. Can't it's do okay. the time, don't do the crime. Yep. Amen. That's the way it needs to be. That's the way it needs to be, man. We stole a balloon. <laughs> we shot back the stallion in the foot. <laughs> On free balloon day. <laughs> <laughs> and it was we because there was another person who pleaded no contest, so they were silent the whole trial. Oh, no. What a Whoa. dork. Really? <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't pay attention to that at all. I caught the gist of it. I don't know. I don't really like Tory Lanez because I think he's a douche, but, like, he has okay music. I never really checked out any of his stuff. To he's be honest, he's like a mishmash of Drake in The Weeknd. Oh. It's, it's not anything. And he's Canadian, too, so it's like... Ew. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, what haven't we heard? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, it's valid, valid. Now, all right. So we ask a lot of people this question. Um, who do you, would you say is like the all-time goat? Nicky and then Park. rap. Oh, and rap. Oh, rap, and rap, 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 and then rap. We'll do rap and rock. Uh, we'll do both. We'll do both. Uh, Rap? Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, I don't know. Is this like personal? Or yeah, is yeah, this, like, yeah. What do you, yeah. you personally think? It, yeah. Purely subjective. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so we do judge you on it though. Okay, so 
my top five is a little weird. Um, just, just because Don't I relate to a, a lot of these artists. <laughs> Don't say it. But um, <laughs> that's not Eminem, if that's what you're thinking. No, that that would have been valid if you're talking about first three albums, Eminem. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because that was hard. But uh, th- I can't even say like an order. I'm trying to remember the last you're, time you're I did. You can just drop some. It's fine. Uh, Childish Gambino Ooh, when he yeah. was Ooh, rapping. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, dude. He Fucking... inspired me a lot. He like my very first song I ever recorded was called Freaks and Geeks. Nice. Or nice. no, that was his song, and then I turned it into something else. But it was I was using that instrumental. But then like I saw everybody was using that instrumental but like that was like the first song i ever recorded i, I never released it though because the internet Basically. what a fucking record man oh yeah it's a, be- it's a beautiful album man. uh i wish he'd go back to that style um big pun is oh a- another good one wow. yeah you know your shit i i i grew up my adoptive father listened to hip hop music, so like I I grew up like on the East Coast New York style of like rap, so this, that's why I asked for one bad beat. Don't but uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's like I'm very um, I don't know. I like the way he fills the space with all the syllables he fits in his bars. Like that's crazy. I like I like the sound of it. You know what I'm saying? And then like I pay attention to what you say after the fact. I don't know. It's like it's all about how it hits my ear. And sure. if you, then, and then, like, what you're saying matters after that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I it's agree a shame he only put out, like, two or three records before he passed, right? Just two. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that's nuts to think about. <laughs> how powerful he was off two fucking albums. Right. He did a bunch of cool features, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That probably helped A whole different him. time of music back then, though, compared to what it is now as well. The Pain... Uh, Absol. Shout out Absol. Yeah, Hold up. Uh, 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 Absol. The first Classic. rapper I ever shook his hand. Man. He probably might not ever see this, but I have to. <laughs> uh, shout out to Bohemian Stone, who was in my chat earlier. But, like, I met him at the Absol concert. But, like, yeah, he's the first rapper I ever met. And, like, he's, like, I love the way he writes. I mean, some of his shit's kind of out there, but, like, when he's just, like, really snapping. Like, my favorite verse from him ever is, uh, Prime Royce to five nine and Mac Miller, and he was the second verse. He said, uh, "Whoever gets a whiff of the bass is loaded like the World Series." Steve Jobs died, now the World Series or something like that. <laughs> I I butchered that, but like he was. I love the double meanings in like the what do you call them when they sound the same but mean different. Um, Double entendres? Metaphors? <laughs> Not double entendres. Uh, oh, synonyms. Synonyms. Thank you, English class. Yeah, not cinnamon. But like, I said that right. Yeah, you did. Yeah, but. He influences my, like, writing when it comes to, like, rapping and stuff like that. Like, in my song, Late Night Conies, I do a lot of that stuff. That was a good one. Yeah. The album cover on that was sweet, too. (laughs) That was the GTA cell font. Yeah. Shout out DJ DDT and Chuck Chan. I seen the picture of Hitler when the Twin Towers dropped. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) That's my shit. We were talking about that song earlier. Um, (laughs) Who else? I said, Charles Gambino, Big Pun, Absol. Uh, I know it's kind of a cop out, but Mike Shinoda, aka Fort Minor, who is the rapper of Lincoln Park, fair. I messed with that album, uh, just because he was trying to venture and find his voice, and he was like, "I want to do the hip hop thing for a little bit now." I don't think he'll say it, though. Uh, but yeah, it's the last one. Yeah, I'm in the fifth one. This is the oh, fifth one. Let's oh. see if he's gonna say it. Oh, I wish I knew who it was. Nope. Uh. Was it rap? Uh, the pain. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Royce to five nine because I'm just saying this so you can get me into Heaven no, Studios. No, that's fine. No, yeah. that was what you were gonna say. That's what you were gonna say. Solid that's choice. Fine. Yeah, all those are yeah. beautiful. Yeah. We're, I was worried you were gonna say Drake. I've had so many people come out here. Like, I do. I do bro. listen to a lot of Drake. Of course, which is fine. But and don't Drake act like he's the best. Drake. You know? Yeah, exactly. Drake is a good rapper. He does have a good pen game, but he's not. He's not. <laughs> A rapper anymore. He's a pop star now, unfortunately for him in this regard. But uh, yeah, I I do like when I go back to like my Spotify most listens. Like he's one of the names that comes up a lot. But that's because yeah, that's fine. I, I mean, listen to like I don't 
And there's probably like two rap songs where I listen to him, but the rest of it is like the singing pops. I, I love pop music. So yeah. it's like, yeah. There's oh. nothing wrong with liking Drake, but <laughs> calling him the goat is absurd. It is, 100%. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, so, what, that's my point. Now we're twindling down to the last few moments of the podcast. Personally, my least favorite part of the night. Oh. Um, oh. Oh, everybody cry a little. Oh. Um, is there any last shout outs? Anything you would like to say to the wonderful viewers? Shout out to Big Michaela. Shout out to. Hold on, can I stand up real quick? Can Do I whatever you want. You can take off your pants yeah. if you want. Oh, I'm care. gonna take off my shirt. So you take, take off your shirt, up, your too. pants, your hat. I don't care. Get uh, comfortable. Here he goes. Uh, hold on. T- take off the headphones. Uh, dang. There you go. Here he goes. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. I don't know if you can see this in the camera. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. Detroit, Detroit is not dead. Is oh. not dead. Support go. that. Support that woman. Crispy. Shout out to Michaela. She's she's not, she's not having a hot time right now, so I figure I wear this to like support her vision. She just did a bunch of drops earlier this month. Uh, if you go to Detroit's Not Dead, you can go to their uh, their bio and you can order some shirts like this. I, I used to have uh, a one on one, but now like this design is out right now, so you can order it now too if you like. It's it's all hand painted. <laughs> it's it's a labor of love, and you should really support her because that was crazy that she let me buy this like literally at the very last second. So yeah. you should always <coughs> you should always support local. Support local. <coughs> and I unplugged myself for like the third time. Anybody okay. else? Any other <laughs> shout outs you got? Shout out Danny S. Shout out Brian Castillo. Shout out um, Nora Chrissy. Shout out Better Unsaid. Shout out Macha. Shout out Raquel Soledad. Shout out the Team Soul. Um, shout out James Donaldson. Shout out Kevin Cornwell. And shout out Caleb. Caleb. Uh, Caleb, <laughs> Caleb, Caleb, the bass player. I just love how it was. Shout out Caleb, and that was it. Just, Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> I forgot his last name. name. Just shout out Caleb. <laughs> all, the, all the musicians in my life. Shout out Jabari. Shout out Dev. Man, we're about to kill it. Oh, and shout out to uh, Natalie and El Emo Verde and Be the Light. I got a show October 28th. It's going to be my last performance of the year, Southwest. Uh, check out my posts. Uh, it's it's gonna be in a warehouse. I'm gonna have like a whole rock band with me. I'm doing all the heavy stuff going out this year with a bang. So yeah, check me out. Ooh. Shout out Victorino for coming out to the All oh, Yeah podcast tonight. Thank you for taking the time out and being here. Um, shout out all of you guys that are sitting here watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow. Check him out on the Instagram and on Spotify and wherever you find all your streaming platforms. And for all of you that are interested in getting into the Instagram questions, you can go find that on our Instagram profile as well. Link down there. Um, don't forget to tune in over to Spotify for Behind the Yale as well. Oh!